Welcome to driving.ca. I'm Jay Canna and I am with the first ever Chevrolet Silverado EV. This specific blue one here is the RST trim and that'll come to Canada at some point in 2023 according to the Chevrolet. And what we're going to focus on in this video is the work truck because that's the volume truck and that's what Chevrolet has chosen as far as their first debut. I did want to start off with a quick look at the 2024 RST. You'll notice there's a lot more color in the front end. Massive 20 four inch wheels here as opposed to the 22s we get on the work truck trim. Uh, this is a power frunk all the way up all the way down with a push of a button as opposed to what the work truck has which is just a power release and there's a lot more bells and whistles on the inside but let's change gears or not change gears for that matter because this is an EV and let's go from the RST exterior into the work truck where I'll talk about the exterior, the interior, what it's like to drive, range, charging times, all the good things you know and expect from driving Dodge CA when it comes to all new EVs. We'll also touch on range, which is a whopping 724 kilometers. And more importantly, what Chevrolet has done as far as design and functionality goes to help them be at the top of the range in the pickup truck EV world, which is very competitive. Starting with the outside, there's really not a lot you can do as far as pickup truck design goes to make it very clever and innovative, but Chevrolet has still found a way. And the big differences here are they've added a rear spoiler to reduce wind resistance. And with the tonneau cover fully extended, they haven't told me exactly by how much, but they did say that it reduces drag and increases efficiency. You'll also notice that there are flying buttresses where the body meets the bed and that's completely for aerodynamics. It's kind of a cool throwback to the old Chevrolet Avalanche, which used to have those in the early 2010s. Charging port is on the driver's side at the back of the bed, so you have to reverse in, which I think is a very smart and safe move. Up front, you've got a couple of air curtains. Again, it's all about finding ways to reduce resistance and increase efficiency. Aside from that, it's a pretty standard looking pickup truck and you wouldn't really know at first glance that it is an EV. Yes, you can see that there is no traditional grill as what the Silverado gasoline version has, but I think Chevrolet has done a pretty solid job here of maintaining the shape, not making it look too out of place, but yet adding in just a couple of pieces to increase efficiency and again, reduce wind resistance. With this being the work truck spec, you don't really have a lot of bells and whistles on the outside. Yes, there are these side steps and there's a lot of durable, hard plastic materials like the wheel arches uh, and some bits and pieces up front and in the rear. You do have the front trunk, which is powered as far as the initial opening and closing goes. It doesn't go all the way up on its own like the RST does. And you get a decent amount of space. Now it's nowhere near the Ford F-150 Lightning's cavernous space as far as cargo goes, but the fact that Chevrolet put something there to give you a little extra added space plus some power outlets is always a good move. And I think it will absolutely be highly utilized. So it really plays to the functionality of this truck and specifically it being a work truck, that's really the name of the game here. Once you're inside, it's fairly evident that it's a work truck spec. And it's not a bad thing at all, at least not for me, because the work truck really prioritizes functionality and the utilitarian side of it. And yes, there are some hard plastics here. And there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. But again, it's all about what can the truck do for you. And yes, it's gonna have plenty of miles put on it, but it's more for what it can do versus the bells and whistles that come along with other trims. There's a fair sized infotainment screen. It's not the quickest out there, but it doesn't really need to be. You get all of your information here, no problem in extracting information, finding information, and you don't have to do a lot of menu digging to get what you need out of it. And yes, it runs off the Google map system, which is pretty good because I think that's what the majority of us use. You can also get information on your car, your charging, uh, as well as any kind of towing, including a towing checklist, which isn't new for Chevrolet, but it's still a pretty cool feature overall. Straight ahead of the driver is the digital instrument cluster. And there's a small issue I have with it based off the way I like my steering wheel, which is a little lower down. The top of the display is slightly obstructed, but the good thing is you can change the type of display and what you want laid out. 
So that key information like your speedometer, because it's all digital, ends up in the middle of the screen as opposed to on the top of the screen where it's a little harder to see. The range is at the bottom left of your screen, which is always in view. So thank you so much for that, Chevrolet. Interestingly, it's a power tilt and telescopic steering wheel, but it's only a four-way adjustable seat. And if it was me, I'd flip that around. I'd happily do a manual adjustment for my steering wheel and get a little more comfort and customization out of my seat. Thankfully, the HVAC controls are all hard touch buttons. Yes, they're glossy black, so they might collect fingerprints, but I'll happily do that trade eight days a week if it means I don't have to dig through a screen going 100 kilometers an hour just to change my HVAC. There's plenty of cargo space here. There's a really deep well just up front in the center console beneath my right elbow. It's covered space and also very cavernous. No shortage of useful and functional cargo space here. Even in the doors, you can fit two water bottles and there's space in front and behind them. Speaker covers have been moved up to give you that additional space as well. Chevrolet has certainly gone all out in making their first ever EV pickup truck something that is really functional and smart. There is so much space in the rear seats. There's so much legroom, and we can thank the way that Chevy has set this up by making it a flat surface. A couple of colleagues are over six feet tall and they fit back here without any issue at all. And again, it goes back to the functionality here. And I keep saying that word, but on the work truck trim, that's exactly what you need. That's exactly what you want. And it's exactly what you're looking for. And Chevrolet has delivered tremendously on their first ever Silverado EV on that side of things. As we go into the driving section, let's start with some numbers. So it's 510 horsepower, 615 pound-feet of torque, and Chevy says this uses their E four-wheel drive chassis. So what's interesting is despite the numbers being really, really high for horsepower and torque, it doesn't feel as fast. Now it doesn't feel slow by any means, it's just not as brisk and instantaneous as what the numbers may lead you to believe. No matter though, it still has plenty of get up and go. There won't be any issues if you're keeping the truck unladen and you're just doing your errands, going to and from wherever you have to without anything on the back. Now, I did get a chance to do some towing with it and the big differentiator here with an EUV is you have all of that instant torque. So going from a standstill, going at much, much lower speeds is a lot easier because again, you have all that instant torque as opposed to a gasoline vehicle where you gotta get the revs up a little bit and step down a little harder. So I can absolutely see an advantage to towing with an EV, specifically here with the 2024 Chevrolet Silverado EV. Regarding range, Chevrolet has managed to squeeze out a whopping up to 450 miles of range or 724 kilometers for those of us that use the metric system. And that's no easy feat, especially in a pickup truck that weighs in and around 8,000 pounds. But Chevrolet has found a way. They're using a 24 module battery. Now, interestingly, Chevrolet wasn't able to reveal the actual kilowatt per hour size of the battery. No matter how much I asked them, they just opted to keep that number to themselves. But what I can say is on the charging side of things, it makes up for it because you're thinking, well, if it's got 450 miles slash 724 kilometers of range, it's gonna take forever to charge. But what they've told me is that it uses a 350 watt kilowatt fast charger and you can get up to 100 miles juiced back into the vehicle in 10 minutes. So if we just do some quick math here at 100 kilometers over 10 minutes to go from low to, I'm gonna guess, 80%, let's go with that nice safe number uh, because you get throttled between 80 and 100%. An hour at the most on a 350 kilowatt fast charger, not too bad. And a lot of people won't let this go down too, too low. If you are doing a road trip, you can go a lot further. And in recent news, Chevrolet has decided to look into moving forward with the Tesla fast chargers as far as being able to have a compatible network. So I think that's a really smart move and yeah, you can go far with it. And by the sounds of it, you can also get back on the road a lot quicker. No official figures have been released on how fast it'll take on a level two charger or a level one, but I'm gonna guess over 75 hours on a level one. Then again, hardly anyone, if anyone is gonna use a level one charger for their Silverado EV. There is a 10.2 kilowatt onboard charger. So that really helps things out. And interestingly, during this drive event, they had two food trucks for dinner on the first night and both food trucks were powered 
by this very truck itself. One drew 220, one drew 110. And we were there for about three hours. And over those three hours, Chevrolet said the battery in this vehicle had gone down only a few percent while powering two food trucks at 220 and 110. That's pretty impressive. And Chevrolet says this can power a house for a couple of days and you can do all sorts of customization. So if you're on a job site, for example, and you wanna say, you know what, I wanna use the battery, but I need 30% of battery charge left to go home. You go into the app and you set it at you know 30% for your bottom as far as how much power you want to draw versus what you have left. It's more than what you can do with driving. It's what you can do with the vehicle stopped or in a stationary position, even with the vehicle off, you can still have plenty of access to power. And again, it goes back to that usefulness and functionality. On the road, the truck feels really, really good and it performs just as well as you'd expect for an EV. But for the work truck trim, it doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles and it doesn't have as much sound deadening equipment as some of the other vehicles have that will come from Chevrolet on their EV side. But it's surprisingly quiet, surprisingly smooth. And yes, there's that instant acceleration and you get up to speed a lot quicker than you would in a traditional internal combustion engine vehicle. But I'm very, very impressed in how Chevrolet has engineered this and put this together. And their big point that they're driving home is they didn't just flip a battery into a gasoline version. They put this together with a lot of purpose and a lot of intent. And it's not just a quick band-aid fix. This is on their new architecture. And what they're looking to do, and I think they are gonna do based off what they've shared with us, is really go hard and aggressive into the EV market. And starting with the work truck isn't the worst idea. I was a little puzzled at first, but I feel they were going for the volume side of things first by getting all of these out there. And now they say there's 180,000 orders uh, with people who have put their names down and put some money down uh, to get one of these. And it's a great way for creating buzz, creating excitement, and really getting a lot of these vehicles on the road. And when you're a little late to the party, this is a great way to catch up extremely quickly and get your presence known. And in Chevrolet's case, get a lot of these Silverado EVs on the road. A couple more numbers before we wrap up. So towing is 10,000 pounds, and that's pretty impressive. Payload is 1,400 pounds. So there's, again, I feel like a broken record. There's so much functionality here. And with the towing, I ended up with around 8,000 pounds on the back of what my vehicle was. And it handled it very, very well. And it goes back to having that instant torque as far as going from lower speeds to higher speeds. And it's still very, very maneuverable. And you know, there's no problems going at regular speeds on straight roads, but it's, I don't want to say nimble, but I didn't have any issues in maneuvering the trailer at all. And part of that is thanks to the 360 degree camera. Well done there, Chevrolet. Chevrolet does offer two levels of one pedal driving. One is very aggressive and one is fairly mild. And if you remove those two, there's a little bit of regen that kicks in. No paddle shifters, you can't adjust it. And you've got to touch the screen uh, to activate the one pedal driving. I wish it was somewhere on the steering wheel or a physical touch button, but no matter, it's fairly easy to get to. And when I say the one pedal regen in its highest form is aggressive, uh, it really is. So I'll give you a quick look. Now I just activated it. Take a look at what's happening outside of my window. My foot is now off the pedal and it's just really quick. And especially for a vehicle that weighs 8,000 pounds, it, uh, it stops in a hurry. I'll give you one peculiar thing and then we'll wrap up the video. There is no start stop button. All you have to do is be in the vehicle with the key fob in hand or use your app. But in this purpose, I had the key fob in hand. I sat down, I stepped in the brake pedal and that was it. Car started, off I go and just shut it off. I put the vehicle in park and that's it. You just get out of the vehicle and it shuts off. So clever on that side makes you want to hang on to your key fob a little tighter. If you don't have the app, it's a really cool and interesting way to do things. Overall, Chevy's first foray into the EV market as far as pickup trucks go is a success. I think they've knocked it out of the park with range. And yes, you'll lose a bunch of range once you start towing, but that's going to be true of any vehicle. I think they've put together a good looking vehicle, a functional vehicle. Canada won't see the work truck until 2024. The RST trim will show up sometime late 2023. 
but there will be some version of the Chevrolet Silverado EV on roads, according to the Chevrolet in Canada, sometime in 2023. If you've got any questions on the 2024 Chevrolet Silverado EV, let us know in the comments. We're always happy to hear from you and engage in a respectful conversation. Connect with us on our website, driving.ca, and engage with us on our social media platforms. For Driving.ca, I'm Jay Canna.